in sync and in balance. <clears throat> so let's move on uh, to startup ecosystems. To break that down and look at some of the, the fundamental piece. So now we have moved from looking at uh, the startup company and the structure and the terminology, get the clarity on that, looking at uh, the, the startup journey, the development phases, the key aspects of, of how they develop and what they need to focus on developing in a balanced manner. And now, uh, with that thought process and framework in mind, we'll, we'll start looking at the startup ecosystem. So the main challenge with, with startup ecosystems are that if we look at them at the very early maturity level, when people start to become familiar with the ecosystem term, they start to understand the concept, and they start to look at uh, the ecosystem, the first feelings that almost everyone gets, regardless whether they're startup or support function or mentor or whatnot, uh, that it's, it's, it's a very confusing, like there's like feeling that there's a lot, and at the same time, it's very unclear, like what is the connection with it, what is the relationship with it, and so forth. So a big part of startup ecosystem development, in addition to thinking of what do we need in our ecosystem, is to actually take uh, index of that and really get more visual uh, understanding and more proper uh, structural understanding of what that ecosystem actually looks like and how it actually functions. <clears throat> and when we talk about uh, innovation, entrepreneurship and startup ecosystems, uh, we go through this um, the visualization exercise to really go through this. So when we talk about typical um, um, old school innovation uh, in a bigger corporation, R&D, uh, side and then on the other side we have entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial people. So these two uh, functions uh, have typically lived much more separate from each other. They have always of course it coexisted as well but looking at that mega trend and, and shift of the old world and the new world um, we have the innovation ecosystem that uh, is an ecosystem of, it, of its own, of course, because the innovations and products, like from technology transfer to, to one company to multiple companies and so forth, um, uh, or research, and someone else takes that research uh, to does something for that, uh, moves that forward, eventually it matures through, uh, it can be an open source product or whatnot. So, Innovation can live in its own ecosystem, and there is an innovation ecosystem separately to conceptually understand. The same goes for the entrepreneurship ecosystem, the entrepreneurship, uh, the talent, and so forth. And in the innovation ecosystem side, we have talent, we have uh, theoretical models, scientists, research. On the business side, we have a tronist, or business side also represents market side. We have analysts, experts, planners, corporate people, attorneys, uh, just to kind of give a flavor. There's of course much more and these are not any specific titles or such. And then on the entrepreneurship ecosystem, that of course also broad, covers much broader scale, scope of uh, entrepreneurs than just um, uh, startups. So we have generally before they become officially entrepreneurs registered, entrepreneurs or companies, we have risk takers, doers, makers, uh, multi-talents, we have, con then when there's more on the market side, we have consultants, we have designers, we have developers, we have like all kinds of business hustlers. Um, so we have all types of different entrepreneurs uh, exercising their entrepreneurial uh, skills and opp uh, opportunities at different scale from, from uh, practical skills to different types of lifestyle businesses. And when we combine these two ecosystems, when we start to look at innovation ecosystem and entrepreneurship ecosystem together, the startups uh, are what 
is the combining factor. It's the best ingredients from both worlds if optimally, uh, we, we just theoretically consider it's like the optimal combination of best ingredients from both these worlds. Best findings, best ideas, best research combined with uh, best uh, market knowledge uh, combined with uh, entrepreneurial skill set, motivation, energy, activity, uh, and then skill sets um, to combine and form startups. So other ingredients uh, for startups we have in, in these roles, we have big companies can contribute resources, we have advisors, mentors from bigger companies or outside of them, we have experts on specific knowledge from technology side, from market knowledge side, we have talent, we have research, we have patents, other IPR, teachers, uh, ideas, problems, ambitions, visions. So these are the typical ingredients that we, we can see. And really the, the, the point here is that a startup as its own separate legal entity that is being created, capsulates the innovation potential and entrepreneurial drive and team effort, not individuals, but team effort in the separate own legal entity that becomes the startup. And this is the connection where we talk more broadly about innovation entrepreneurship. So we talk about the innovation on its own, we talk about the entrepreneurship on its own, innovation entrepreneurship, and then the form of how that goes to market is a startup, because that's the separate legal entity that encapsulates both of these two elements into a understandable and investable format. So uh, each of these ecosystems overlap, they are not like clearly divided areas, they are all overlapping, but this is the, the, the point to communicate how conceptually they can be better uh, identified and, and separated, but also understanding of, uh, to, to help making sure where to, to resources should be looked at and how do we kind of think what belongs into our area and what doesn't belong into our area. And this is not to put this in any order of importance or, or pra practice or priority, this is just to put them in a context of a conceptual framework. So, startup ecosystem, it's the most attractive items from innovation ecosystem. It's the most ambitious people from the entrepreneurial ecosystem. It's all the services, activities, items, and people that are part of the startup growth journey. And those all combined uh, are the startup ecosystem in a nutshell. So this is the part that, that we'll, we'll focus specifically. And, uh, and, and on the background, we have the startup development phases um, as, the, as the overall uh, framework. <clears throat> so, when we look at them uh, in general, so startups are seeding within innovation entrepreneurship ecosystems being influenced and feed it, fed by both ecosystems' best ingredients. And on those uh, development phases on the higher level we have these three key uh, um, areas formation validation and growth and this is uh, breaking this uh, framework now in the context of ecosystem to really see that what are we looking uh, that we are producing and i'm just using these analogies to to communicate the concepts like if we think ecosystem as a factory. Uh, we have the factory as a whole, like the ecosystem, and somewhere there in the factory is the assembly line, and that is the, the, the assembly line is where the startups go through from service to service to mature. Outside of the service, uh, the, the factory line, you have like remote uh, setups that feed that different uh, elements on the factory line. So 
this is the analogy to, to get in the head. But the big difference is that that factor is not to be owned, it's not to be controlled. It's not to be controlled and there are many uh, actually production lines there and they cross cut and so forth. But for the sake of analogy, it's good to understand that, uh, that there is an input and there is uh, combined processes connecting to each other and there's an output which is the, the, the scale-ups of the growing companies and the inputs are ideas and talent. So a formation, a startup is born when the IPRs the, and the founding entrepreneurial team members commit to contribute to build the value and co confirm this value to be captured to a company with the founder's shareholder agreement. So there is some document, some document, typically a shareholder's agreement, that defines what are the IPRs, what, are, what, what the company owns that the founders contribute, who are the team members, like who are the actual names, like how many, how many shares do they own, what is the ownership percentage. So all of those are like documented that there actually is a startup. Before there is a shareholder agreement created, it's just a vague concept. Uh, even if people talk about there's a team, but if there is no agreement, there is no team. Uh, validation, a startup is ready for growth after the core team's ability and commitment to build and execute the vision is validated and product and clear customer and market validation. <clears throat> so the validation phase is not only for the to validate the actual innovation in a form of service or product, but it's also to validate, validate the team's ability and capability to, to execute and push that product and push that innovation to the markets. So validation is both for the market side and for the organization side. And the growth area is about scaling and multiplying all required things that are validated to work in most efficient manner while having clear methods in place to actively measure and validate the scaling process and overall progress. <clears throat> so the growth becomes all about converting all of that knowledge that is created at the validation phase and scaling uh, through a means of more team members and putting processes in place, replicating and scaling uh, the business model that works. So these are the three key areas uh, to, to look at. And it is important that, that uh, the services that are meant for the validation phase are targeted for companies that are actually ready for the validation phase and saying that they are ready for the growth phase. So it's important to find the right uh, match with the services and the companies. <clears throat> But with this lens, we can really see ecosystem as a funnel. So the analogy from the factory product line, but we can, when we convert that more into more open concept, we, we have the ability to look at through a lens of funnel. And in this funnel, uh, we can then start really measuring the effectiveness of the ecosystem by looking at how much of that funnel flow do we actually have in our ecosystem and how does the flow look like over a period of time from the lens of individual companies, from the lens of category of companies, from the companies that were started in a specific year, looking at three years later um, and so forth. And with that we can also look at uh, what type of support services we actually have there to support these volumes and we can get the sense of uh, the, the measurability uh, of the ecosystem. <clears throat> and we have collected here uh, a number, uh, a, a statistical average uh, from multiple different sources to validate that we have a, a round about numbers to indicate what type of conversions and what type of indicators we typically are looking at uh, to get a, a funnel through 
how many ideas and people and teams and types of companies we need to push through to get a significant uh, uh, scale up company. Uh, and, and, and this is more to give a simulation perspective into when you look at your own ecosystem from this perspective, uh, how does this, these numbers look like? Uh, and, and if you think of uh, how much you want to get per year, then what type of uh, uh, support levels uh, should actually be in place? And of course, it's not that startups can't build everything on their own without any support. Of course they can, but most likely if they feel that kind of ecosystem, they most likely move to an ecosystem where the support does exist. So uh, it's, it's not to say that support uh, is there to create startups. Um, it is to inspire and support, and there's many ways to, to contribute for that. But of course, uh, it's the entrepreneurs uh, who actually build the startups. But the environment matters significantly. And uh, <clears throat> the typical organizations in an ecosystem include universities, advisory and mentoring organizations, incubators, accelerators, co-working spaces, service providers, typically in the form of private small companies, consulting, accounting, legal. Uh, many of these organizations also themselves provide events, but then there are separately those who just provide events. Uh, there are startup competitions, investor networks, VC companies, crowdfunding platforms, other funding providers, uh, public grants, loans, uh, startup blogs, um, uh, business media that focuses also in innovations and new companies, economic development entities, uh, and other related facilitators and stakeholders. And it's important to understand that, that the ecosystem is actually to look at all of them and not only look at university as an ecosystem or looking at one event organizer as an, as an ecosystem. They are all communities and they may have, depending on the size, of course they can have their own ecosystem as well, where that includes multiple different things. But when we look at startup ecosystems, uh, as a whole, we need to take into account all of the different uh, organizations, actors and services that contribute for the whole life cycle of uh, the companies from before they are companies to when they are becoming uh, significant, uh, significant bigger companies already. And Maybe here also, uh, for, for, for sake of clarity, also some of these uh, terms that come from a startup world like the incubator and accelerator is one of the, the phrase where uh, there can be a lot of inconsistency on what does an incubator actually look like in one ecosystem versus in another, and even more so with accelerators like who, like, like there is, also definition for what accelerator is that has been created by the consortium of accelerators because there is sometimes those who call themselves accelerators that are just incubators that change their names but their functions didn't really change um, and accelerator is a relatively new term but it's not for our job to say what is right or what is wrong but to just highlight these different aspects uh, that sometimes just because someone says they are something doesn't necessarily resonate with someone who is looking uh, for accelerator and then they come across something that doesn't match their understanding of what accelerators actually should be doing. So, so this uh, misguided terminology compared to what is a market average uh, should be uh, one of the areas to, to really pay attention as well. <clears throat> uh, Ecosystem roles, so we have, of course, entrepreneurs and future entrepreneurs, uh, so the, the upcoming talent, we have startups and ideas, we have team members, so another form of talent coming uh, upstream, uh, we have uh, potential team members, we have ecosystem organizations, 
own operative people, so we have support uh, functions, mentoring organization, advisory, and we have all kinds of people there coordinating and, and supporting these organizations, functions that also are directly interacting with startups. <clears throat> we have experts and advisors, investors of various types, uh, and then we have uh, inventors, so those who don't even care to take their products any further, but they are just happy creating new potential innovation in the form of inventions. We have innovators, uh, similar that they like to create ideas and they maybe like to throw them to a certain point, but they don't really necessarily want to push them forward, or they do. Uh, they are more and more uh, want to see some of their innovations more in the market. You have mentors, researchers, supporters, other entrepreneurial people that are uh, really proactive and engaging in the ecosystem support, uh, but not necessarily entrepreneurs or don't even necessarily want to be entrepreneurs themselves. Uh, and specifically, we see those uh, in the US terms now in the form of ecosystem builders. Uh, so uh, a lot of those individual people who are really like, regardless of their organization where they work, in a support function, in a bank, in a government organization, or uh, in an incubator, they go way beyond their own like official job or role, very entrepreneurial, uh, wanting to support and develop the ecosystem, uh, regardless of what the organization uh, where they work is doing. And of course, they try to make that organization to do more as well. But even if they change the job, they most likely don't change their focus on, on entrepreneurial focus to develop the ecosystem. So. Uh, but these are more uh, individual people rather than organizations. And, <clears throat> and then other ecosystem stakeholders. So these are policymakers, they are those who have influence and they have impact for ecosystem, but they are not necessarily um, actively operate, operationally engaged. Development financiers and so forth. So, a startup, if we look at the startup ecosystem, uh, also a, a bit more to summarize, a startup ecosystem is formed by people, startups, in their various stages and various types of organizations in a location, typically physical, a city setting, or a virtual that can also, of course, be built online, uh, but it's a different shape, interacting as an organic system to create new companies. And different organizations typically focus on specific parts of the ecosystem function and or startups at their specific development phases. And when we look at the interaction between the startups and ecosystems is that startups develop in startup ecosystems through the development phases in a constant interaction with various organizations, services and people. And the more dynamic transparent and balanced ecosystem is, the more successful startup ecosystem, the startups ecosystem can create. So there is a really uh, this symbiotic uh, relationship between these two. And of course, there are also people who change roles from being an entrepreneur to being a mentor, to becoming back an entrepreneur, to becoming an advisor, to going back to being entrepreneur, to coming back as an investor. So uh, there's a lot of um, uh, fluidity uh, overall in the ecosystem to understand. Maybe I stop here to check if there's any questions. We, we haven't got any questions on the chat, Balto. All right, so just want to say to everyone that uh, I know sometimes it can be, be a lot, uh, but at the same time, I, I encourage you, if you have questions on your own notes, feel free to share those in the chat and we can cover those. Uh, but if not, uh, we will just continue uh, for, uh, on, the, on the webinar. <clears throat> so, 
uh, when we look at the startup ecosystem and the services uh, in a more practical sense, uh, we, we, we want to kind of showcase the problem uh, from a, two different perspectives. Uh, and this is more like the real life, uh, often startup entrepreneur or other individual people navigating the ecosystem and then looking from the perspective of support organization providing the services. <clears throat> so a typical view uh, from customers' perspective, so whether I'm a new talent with an idea or whether I'm already a startup entrepreneur pushing my venture forward, uh, but coming from maybe uh, another ecosystem, from moving from one city to another or so forth. Um, the confusion is that even if you know how to read ecosystem, like you know who is who and what is organization, what do they typically do and so forth, but even let alone not having that, the, 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 the typical challenge that you can come across is that there's a lot of organization and they also have multiple different services and oftentimes those services may be outdated still available but not available so still on the website but not available uh, oftentimes because uh, everyone wants to be helpful they tend to cater for we do this and this and this and we also do this and this but when you really look at maybe 80 percent of that goes to one service specifically or three top three services uh, so oftentimes you may see organizations that try to do too much they communicate too much and and not very clear of what actually they provide. And when you multiply this with the bigger the ecosystem, the more accuracy it is, the more confusing it becomes. And because of this, you can actually many times see that, the, that even these individual uh, ecosystem builders or those like really active individuals they, even in, as individual, they have tried solving this problem many times uh, until they run out of resources or efforts and then it quickly comes outdated. And so you can see kind of these ghost lists in many places where uh, the information exists, but anyone who is familiar with the ecosystem can see, oh, that's outdated, oh, that's not any more relevant, oh, that's... So, and what happens when the next person who is very energetic and comes with the same problem? Well, they may try to replicate the solution and they try to create a map and they try to do it. Sometimes this happens as crowdsourced effort and uh, it, it is an important exercise, but there needs to be a continuum after that. It should not be repeated just for the sake of repeating and typically in the same uh, solution format, uh, by different actors, but not consistently making sure that the problem doesn't reoccur and there is actually a, a, a solution that keeps improving and developing and is always up to date. So <clears throat> when we look at uh, the support organization perspective, we can basically simplify any support function into a process where there's a service process of some kind, whether it's a, even if it's a startup event, you go there, you acquire knowledge, you acquire contacts, you come out and you have more knowledge and you have more contacts. So that was the process that you went in, that was the improvement that you get, let alone an advisory process or accelerator process or incubator process. But you really should look at that as a process. And in this support organization's view, we have customers coming in, experiencing the process, the service. It may be two hours, it may be three months, it may be two years to be in a support process. Um, but that's what, 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 what these uh, uh, services are about. Customers come in, typically the, the, the service people uh, running the support function, they start from a perspective of where do you come from, who are you, where do you come from, um, what, what do you need, do you fit our service, and then once they have, they engage that certain period of time, out they go, and oftentimes they have very difficulty to know what happens after that for the companies. The more volume they, they do, 
the bigger this problem becomes. At the same time, there's the very limited visibility of what are the other ecosystem organizations uh, in the ecosystem. So you, the similar uh, limitation to see who they are as oftentimes, even though uh, working there for a longer period of time, that understanding starts to develop, but also in support organizations, people change, when people go, they may know when new people come in, everything is again a new thing, uh, needs to learn who are who and so forth. And there are many different customer journeys, so each of the startup may navigate different ways. So different uh, paths, different roads, one may go through one path depending on industry or innovation and so forth. And the customer experience is really through this service uh, is that they are not really connected. There's no clear path from one organization to another uh, and they need to navigate through. They may not even know about all of them. Oftentimes to support people, they may know a couple of relevant organizations, but not uh, all of the ones. And sometimes even the entrepreneurs or the startups, when they come to support service, the startup themselves know better because they just came from an organization and they just heard what services are being offered and what are the new things that are coming. They may know more than the organization that they visit next, where they tell about this product and the, the next service may say, oh, I haven't heard about that. So uh, there's a lot of this disconnectivity between the information flowing and the knowledge about the ecosystem uh, services and actors happening. So in addition to that, there's a uh, bunch of other challenges, uh, multiple people uh, with um, different needs, people uh, from students to long-term uh, civil servants, so very different uh, profiles, uh, multiple organization types with different core purposes, so some only focus on entrepreneurship support, we don't support startups, though we support innovation of all kinds and, and startups and, um, and so forth. Multiple support services and service processes for different targets. Uh, so really big variety, public, private, NGO, hybrid organizations and budgets. Uh, oftentimes there can be project-based funding that allows to develop a service and then it's run for you know two years, three years until the, 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 the project funding ends. And even though it was working great and everyone liked, there is no continuum with that project. And a new project is created to get the organization funding so that the people don't lose their jobs. And it's just a confusing thing for many. Big, small and growing companies, constantly evolving in a, uh, innovative environment variety of terminology, entrepreneurial culture, many different tools used by different parties for different purposes, uh, limited availability of real startup building experience. And this is exactly why we have created a digitally distributable, scalable uh, curriculum. Uh, we have open source version of the whole curriculum, 900 slides, free to download from our website. Uh, we have the e-learning content and we have a certification model for, for, for increasing the, the uh, in-person uh, startup uh, building experience, uh, training and knowledge there. Success is based on volumes of new unknowledgeable people joining. So basically meaning that uh, it, not only new startups, but new people coming to become a policy maker, new people coming to support function, new people coming from corporate background to support startups as advisory, but not having experience of building something out of nothing, but experience of running an existing company, very different skill set. Um, <clears throat> so really a lot of people that constantly would not only training the new talent, but really training everyone in the ecosystem repeatedly and ongoing basis in a scalable, repeatable manner in a consistent knowledge format. 
something that is not changing, something that is more evergreen and applicable over decades of time. Myths and wrong knowledge from startups and other regions. So consuming media perspective out of what's happening elsewhere versus then looking on the ecosystem and thinking, well, our problems here are all unique uh, uh, just for us and elsewhere, everything is working better. Uh, we should all understand that. And, and based on our experience of working with more than 30 ecosystems on the ground, we know that all the ecosystems are suffering from similar problems at different scale, excluding a couple of top leading ecosystems in the world that are in their own levels that cannot be replicated because there is no such capital available. <clears throat> but when we look at thousands and thousands of cities across the board globally, the problems are not unique. They are very similar uh, of, of depending on the different maturity levels of what are the most re relevant problems at the time, uh, but they are very similar everywhere. There, there's no data sharing, there's no standard reporting, the KPIs and the metrics are random and not consistent uh, year after year for comparability, for improvements and so forth. So the good thing about these challenges, of course, is that there's plenty of field to work with, uh, a lot of practical things to start working on, and not only looking at how do we get more VCs, how do we get more investors into our ecosystem. There's much more practical problems to work on that are much more solvable and much more uh, tangible 